our focus uh, and what we're going to be speaking about over the next 10 to 15 minutes is about application of AR in a very practical um, way towards medical visualization. And so our background um, is that I, I myself, I work at NYU Medical Center uh, as a neurosurgery resident. And yeah, I'm a senior radiology resident at NYU. And uh, we started Medivis, um, literally it's like a year ago um, to this day. And the whole goal with Medivis is to take this incredible technology coming out in the form of augmented and mixed reality and see how we can apply it towards advancing uh, medical visualization. And so Chris and I co-founded um, the company and the whole goal was to, to uh, consider the possibilities behind creating the future um, behind, um, behind how we utilize medical imaging data uh, in hospitals and in clinics throughout the world. Um, and so the problem is uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, in terms of medical visualization, the way it's traditionally always been viewed and utilized in hospitals has been in this standard two-dimensional grayscale format. You folks have seen this all throughout um, through either if you've been in a hospital yourself, whether you've had a CAT scan or an MRI yourself, it's all two-dimensional grayscale data. And that's how most surgeons and most physicians, um, that's the sort of data they use to prepare for invasive operations um, and, and understand their patients. And so uh, I'd like to show this image because, um, uh, you know, it just shows how uh, reliant we are on the same format of data. The photo on the left is a CAT scan of the brain. It was the first CAT scan image ever taken. It was uh, nearly uh, half a century ago. Um, this was done in London uh, where Dr. Hounsfeld came up with the, the CAT scan technology itself. And this is um, taken uh, only months ago at NYU Medical Center. And while the spatial resolution has improved, scanner acquisition time has improved, we're still using grayscale slice based data to understand what's always fundamentally been uh, an incredibly intricate three-dimensional problem. And uh, yeah. yeah, so, uh, you know, just a little bit more of our background. I mean, uh, just really into tech aside from being physicians. And so, uh, you know, just reading about this even back 2014, 2015, about what was on the horizon, started to put our, our brains together and think about how could we actually truthfully really apply this and actually make a difference. We decided to drill down into three avenues. You know, the first one, um, you know, using these two-dimensional uh, images, a lot of times what you're doing is you're scrolling through them and then you're having to kind of recreate the three-dimensionality three of it in your mind's eye. Um, and so, you know, there's immediate use case. How can we use this to actually leverage uh, visualization for surgeons in the operating room? The second one, no-brainer, obviously education. Um, you know, just being a medical student ourselves and going through this, um, and having to have multiple different sources of, of is, this, is this thing working? Okay. Uh, you know, multiple different sources of, of anatomy information and having to try to put that information together again in your mind's eye and actually recreate uh, how these things work and interact with in three dimension space. And then of course the patients, right? So a very hot thing right now is patient engagement. How can we bring down the walls of, of medicine, allow patients to have their own information and just be well informed. Um, and so these were the three areas uh, that we thought that this technology could really, uh, really fundamentally change things. Um, and, you know, we're talking about three-dimensional uh, visualization. The need for it in medicine is not new. Uh, you know, just a, a chart telling you that it's expanding over time, but it's been something that's been celebrated in the literature for decades. And what's interesting, what's starting to happen is that if you read these academic papers and then scroll to the end, the conclusion, all of them are starting to associate with things that we think of standard of care, right? So it's, you know, increased safety, you know, risk reduction, accelerating learning, right? All these positive things. And now there's just tens of thousands of papers demonstrating the value. And we think this technology could really shake things up. Yeah, so this is just talking about how does medicine utilize three-dimensional visualization right now? One way is 3D printing. Um, you know, uh, it's an incredible technology, but it's limited in its application because you're taking all this CAT scan MRI data and over a course of hours to days, you have to print this model. Once you use the model for a particular case, you have to throw the model away. It's a very expensive technology to use. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's been work in, uh, in uh, dare I say in this conference, VR, uh, but uh, this is a company uh, called Echopixel and they have a Z-Space monitor here that kind of um, projects this uh, CAT scan information and 
uh, users wear stereoscopic goggles and can look at it in 3D. But um, our vision has always been that it's, it, that's all a, um, a marker on the road to the kind of final frontier of visualization, which we feel is augmented or mixed reality specifically. And so if you look at like the evolution of visualization in medicine, back in the 19th century, we were only able to take one x-ray shot, right? It, then eventually we moved to a series of photos. We now, most institutions use computers in the operating room. So there's a computer sitting somewhere in the corner with a patient's CAT scan or MRI. And, um, and physicians are going to refer to that or surgeons throughout the case to see if they're doing the right thing or planning the surgery in the right manner. There's been some move towards volume rendering and use of VR, but we feel and our entire focus is that mixed reality itself will provide the ultimate solution for medical visualization. And if you look at the space when it comes to AR and MR, people, you know, I don't need to tell um, the group here, but uh, most folks in the tech community believe this is the next revolution in computing. Um, and it's only something that, uh, that will continue um, to be more and more integrated into the lives uh, of um, not just the medical community, but consumers and other enterprise use cases as well. All right, so getting down to it, right? So this was, you know, this is our vision. How do we harness this technology to transform medicine? Right, and we, we started experimenting with this for you know, about a year now, and really we want to target the entire spectrum. Um, and so we drilled down into two projects. Uh, the education front, which is our project called Anatomy X, uh, that we'll show you guys. And here we kind of have comprehensively modeled the human body, um, and then organized into systems and regions, and you can navigate in a really incredible way. Um, and then our clinical platform, uh, RenderX, where we can actually take patient-specific uh, CT and MRI data and then render that holographically. Um, and just a background, uh, so currently medical education, it's all thanks to this guy, Frank Netter, uh, who his book is just used you know, throughout all of medical education. Um, and this guy, these are actually paintings. Um, he had such a tremendous career, he actually uh, did the equivalent of finishing a painting every three days for 50 years, is the amount of work that this guy put into, you know, trying to convey different views and images of the human body. Um, and, you know, when you look at, so this is his book right here on the left, and so this is what it looks like in the anatomy labs where you're standing there with Netter's book and then, you know, looking at the human body there. And we're just looking at this entire, you know, scene right here and thinking that there's a, probably a, more interesting, compelling way to actually learn this information. Um, and so this is just a short video filmed through the headset itself, um, where, you know, currently I think, you know, it's around 3,000, 4,000 separate pieces of the human body, like I mentioned. Uh, you can walk through it, you could have voice commands, you could lure pieces out to actually get a better visualization of it. Um, you could, you know, apply different labels. Um, and we've just gone through the process of actually optimizing all these so that it could render um, in all these new technologies that are coming out with, with some nice textures to make it photorealistic. Yeah, and the potential here is that you can take all of this information that students seem to learn visual spatially in 3D to begin with and actually present it to them in that manner, in a dynamic manner. Get them past words and paintings and two-dimensional you know, um, drawings into something that will give them the data as they should be learning it. Um, and then the other project uh, that we actually started the company in regards to was RenderX. So how do you help surgeons and physicians who are actually working with patients on a daily basis uh, take CAT scan and MRI data and look at it holographically? How can you help them plan for surgeries in three-dimensional space? And so um, here we uh, worked over the past year to create algorithms to uh, enable that. And um, we're currently using the Microsoft HoloLens technology, although our work is hardware agnostic, and this is a CAT scan of a patient, beautifully rendered in holographic space. And we, you know, um, there's a huge focus on UI and how can you manipulate this data and use it in a very uh, effective uh, manner. And we'll show you some use cases to this specifically. This right here, if you look at the left, that's an aneurysm. Uh, you know, it's an outpouching of a vessel in the brain. Traditionally, that's the scan doctors you look when they're about to perform an invasive operation to take care of the aneurysm. And on the right, you see that same medical image now holographically rendered and the ability to explore it in completely uh, immersive um, uh, space. And we actually published at one of the major 
um, radiology uh, conferences uh, in the world on this specifically. Yeah, um, just about that, right? So we're simultaneously trying to do the academic research and then get out there and speak at these conferences. I just got back from one last week. Um, just another use case of oncology, um, you know, being filmed through the headset again in the operating room. Here you can see this patient has a frontal meningioma, a benign brain tumor. Um, but, you know, again, you know, this is through stereo, right? So it has that real three-dimensional look to it. And what's interesting is that in radiology, a lot of times we do image fusion where you can actually take a study like this. This is diffusion tractography. So the colors actually have meaning and they are reflecting the, the vectors in space of the brain pathways. It's literally a map of how the brain is communicating with itself. So you can take information like that and then fuse it with an MRI and then you could actually see, for example, the speech pathway, right? And now we can actually actively avoid that area um, and think about, different approaches to surgery in, in a new way um, and be able to, uh, you know, co-register this with the actual patient before you on the operating table. And, um, you know, this is just another use case, but in spinal surgery specifically, there's often a lot of hardware plays. And so to be able to look at that dynamically, because it is a three-dimensional science, it's a three-dimensional intervention you're performing on the patient, why not understand it in that manner? Um, and so um, uh, here you can see the screws that were placed in this patient. That's how physicians traditionally look at patient imaging, and you can even see graphs that were placed uh, in a very uh, intricate manner. Uh, and beyond just neurosurgery alone, um, you know, all fields of medicine can utilize this sort of visualization, including plastic surgery with their <coughs> focus on, on bony reconstruction, congenital cardiac surgery makes heavy use of 3D printing right now. But again, like I said, with 3D printing, you're waiting for days for these models to come back. And often these cases are emergency cases. You need the information right there, right then. So can we enable physicians to have that information right there and then in a very powerful manner? Um, and then, of course, orthopedics can also make use of this. Um, this is just uh, kind of describing the, the um, publications we and the presentations we've given on this because it's important any technology in medicine for it to be truly applicable you have to prove its use you have to do research behind it. you have to demonstrate it and gain the trust of the larger medical community and that's a task we want to take on ourselves um, so just going forward as a timeline you know we'll be um, we're actually pretty excited I'm actually taking a year off from my residency to continue on this full-time Chris and I will both be on this full-time as well we have an incredible engineering team with uh, Jared Phillips, Sam Seidenberg, and Wembo Land. And um, we're, uh, we just uh, moved into our new space in Dumbo. So we're, hopefully over the course of the next year, um, we're, we're gonna see what the possibilities truly lie in this and, and how we can truly help healthcare with, with AR-based visualization. Not just the one year, but beyond that, obviously, as well. And, um, and yeah, this is our contact information. That's our website and, uh, and email. Find us afterwards <laughs> or email us if anything. Thank you.